Hey guys, so I've been doing a lot of video game streaming videos and that kind of stuff and um, like goofing around videos with me and Chris, but I kind of wanted to do a more serious video today about Prismo, our dog. You probably see him in a lot of my videos um, and he's a cute little guy, but he has something uh, genetically going on with him that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So like before I start talking about any of this, I just want to preface it with I have a bachelor's degree in neuroscience and um, prior to that I have an associate's degree in genetics. So um, I do know like a little bit about what I'm talking about. So before anybody starts like hardcore trolling me in the comments, just like full disclosure. But um, so yeah, Prismo. This is Prismo. He's a Shih Tzu. He's like about two years old. And we named him after the Adventure Time character whose name is Prismo. And Prismo doesn't really show up a lot in Adventure Time. He's like a shadow character. But it's funny because his character grants wishes. And then the wishes, if they're not worded exactly correctly, they have like an unexpected twist. Which I feel like is such like a deep metaphor for Prismo. Because, you know, people bred these dogs together in hopes to get a Shih Tzu and they got an unexpected twist with Prismo and then they just gave him away to a shelter, which is really sad. So the shelter that we got him from was Columbus Humane Society in April 2019. And he had been there for like four or five months already. And he was, he looked so different. We should cut in a picture of him when I first got him with his wig, because he looked so different whenever I first got him. And I went to visit multiple times. Um, initially, the reason why I was going to the shelter was because um, I had recently moved and had to leave a different dog behind. Um, it was just a long story. <laughs> but uh, so I was really missing my dog. And so I was going to the shelter a lot, just visiting dogs. And then I saw Prismo, whose name was, what even was it? Fidget. They named him Fidget. Which, like, was mean because he has, you know, he has a twitch. <laughs> but anyways, so went to see him. He just seemed so excited. Like, he was just such an excited little puppy. And he was so cute. And you, like, you could kind of tell there was something going on with him, but, like, not really. He's actually um, a victim of pure breeding. So due to um, bad breeding, Prismo actually... Uh, has an underdeveloped cerebellum, which is a part of your brain that's in charge of motor function and coordination. So what he has, it's called cerebral hypoplasia, and that just basically means like underdeveloped cerebellum. Um, he has a number of other things going on with him, but that's like the main thing. And it's pretty cool because even though he was at the shelter forever and um, he had kind of like a tragic beginning, uh, they took really good care of him at the shelter and the people there really loved him. They were great. Shout out to Columbus Humane. They are great. And they actually took him to the Ohio State University to have like all these scans done so they could like roll things out. So Prisma has been through a lot. And I remember like the first night that we got him and even like the first like week that we got him, he was just so like didn't want to be near it, like wanted to like hide and um, just didn't really trust anybody or anything and didn't really seem very strong like he had a chance to like walk around a lot or anything where he was. Um, so he's really come a long way and it makes me happy. So I'm not going to go too deep into like the genetics or anything. I'm just going to kind of like touch on everything because this subject is so broad that I could do a whole video on it. So the reason that mammals are male and female is so that they can combine the strongest parts of their DNA and create a diverse gene pool. And pure breeding in dogs or anything really doesn't allow for a diverse gene pool. Without natural random breeding, eventually the same genes just repeat over and over again until they break down and cause illness or disease. So Prismo is a Shih Tzu and Shih Tzus in general just suffer from a number of health issues in general from, you know, the purebred breeding process. So just a few normal things that Shih Tzus suffer from aside from what Prismo has going on is hypothyroidism, intervertebral disc disease, brachiocephalic airway obstructive syndrome, which is basically their short nose, which causes it 
which which makes it hard for them to breathe. And there's multiple dogs that have like trouble breathing just because we bred them to look a certain way. There's also a type of anemia which causes their immune system to attack itself and kill off their blood cells, which is just crazy. Like imagine if you had a dog and that was happening to them. And this is just normal. This is before like things have gone awry and your dog has cerebral hypoplasia. The distinctively large eyes that they have can be scratched, which might cause an ulcer. Because of everything, the way it's like all squished up, they get like hair in their eyes. Um, they, they can develop cataracts. And chronic eye irritation is so common and untreatable that they sell tear stain removals for these types of dogs, which I did not know because Prismo is always having, like, can you see his little face? He always has tears. It makes me feel so bad. He gets a lot of gunk in his eyes too that I have to pull out. Like, not just like eye bugs, because I've had a lot of dogs and I feel like, you know, you'll get their eye bugs out, but Prismo has like, I don't know, it's like eye tar. Like, it's like some, some, something different. So yeah, so Shih Tzus in general just suffer from a number of health diseases and issues. And that is a product of humans trying to, you know, breed them. And a lot of the people who are breeding animals are not doctors. They're not geneticists. They're not scientists. They're just like looking at a dog and being like, I like the way that one looks and that one looks. Let's breed them together. So there's not a lot of science behind it. Cerebral hypoplasia is another thing that is a product of bad breeding. Obviously, I've touched on that. Cerebral hypoplasia, or CH, which is just a shorthand for it, it's a neurological condition in which the cerebellum is smaller than usual or not fully developed. The cerebellum is in charge of motor function, coordination, balance, that kind of thing. Um, it's actually like at the base of your skull, at the top of your um, brain stem. So... It's a really important part of your brain, so for it to be underdeveloped is like devastating. It really affects your quality of life. So it's more common in cats, but it's also found in dogs and other species, including humans. Prismo has mild cerebral hypoplasia. There are levels to it, so it could be even more extreme than what Prismo experience experiences. And if Prismo were a larger dog, they actually told me this at the shelter. So if Prismo were a larger dog and had cerebral hypoplasia, he would not be able to move. So larger dogs can develop this, but a lot of times they, it just ends tragically for them. So luckily or unluckily for Prismo, he was born tiny, so he could, you know, live on. Um, but he does live with decreased muscle tone. Um, he keeps scrolling down. He's like sleeping on the keyboard and keeps scrolling down my notes. He suffers from decreased muscle. <laughs> Gonna wait, wait, so I can't anymore. Prismo suffers from decreased muscle tone, inability to control range of movement, inability to correct, to correctly sequence fine coordinated acts, which like, we're gonna, like, I wish you guys could see Prismo on a regular basis because he is just doing the crazy. He did a somersault in the bed earlier this morning. Like, he's always just trying to, like, move around and accidentally does, like, cartwheels and backflips. And, like, he's just very, very weird. But, um, it, there, he has an inability to perform rapid alternating movements. This one Prismo does not have, which is the only one we didn't get. Inability to vocalize correctly. Which, for a while, we I didn't think that he could bark, and he didn't bark, and then, like, we have other dogs, and so he got around the other dogs and just, like, became a dog. It's really, he, like, started barking and rolling in the dirt and eating dirt. <laughs> so, some of them will have involuntary rapid oscillation of the eyeballs in either horizontal or vertical or rotary direction. Um, they have a wide-based gait, so, like, their legs will be far apart when they walk. They suffer from tremors, and um, Prismo specifically has mild cerebral hypoplasia, so he walks with his legs, like, in a wide stance, and it's really funny because, like, we noticed the one time we took him swimming, which was really good for him, by the way. If you have a cerebral hypoplasia dog, let them go swimming, but, you know, like, monitor them, so I think it's good for their muscles, but... Um, we took him swimming the one time, then afterwards he was running around drying off, and we noticed that not only does he stand with his legs far apart, but he also like kicks them out as he walks, so it's really cute. 
But so legs in a wide stance. They have a noticeable bunny hop with the back legs when running, which it's so funny because Chris did all the research for this and kind of like put it together. And he's like, everything was Prismo. It's like, yep, that's Prismo. That's Prismo. That's for the bunny hop thing. You should see Prismo. He can like catch some air sometimes in the backyard when he's running. Um, frequent balance loss and falls. Yes. So noticeable head tremors. Prismo has Prismo shakes. Like, and especially if he's focused, excited, or stressed. So if, if like a lot of times we'll just leave him like on our bed whenever we leave. He goes with us everywhere, but if we do leave him, like he needs to sleep, we'll leave him on the bed. We'll come home and he'll just be like, <laughs> like that's literally how he looks like. Trying to look at you in focus, but, and he's so excited. It's so cute. Um, yeah, or like if he's, if he's focused or if he's focused, like if you're eating and he's like on the floor, he's just like looking at you like, are you going to give me that food? But basically, Prismo is a victim of breeding for profit. So as I mentioned earlier, the people who are breeding, like the people that bred Prismo were not scientists. They were not geneticists. They had no degree and no idea how genetics really even works. Even geneticists are like not entirely sure how genetics works. But um, yeah, so he is definitely a victim. He doesn't know it though. He still loves life. He runs. We have a bunch of other dogs and he loves to like run with them and play with them. And Prismo's like the boss. It's funny because he'll like bark at them and it's really cute how good the other dogs are with him too. Like they're, he's like their little brother that they like are just like, oh, he's annoying, but whatever. <laughs> um, he's been, we've taken him all over the country. So Christopher and I travel a lot and well, we should do more videos on traveling. I think we're going to do that. But he's been to the ocean. He's been to Salt Lake City. He swam in the Great Salt Lake, which he hated he hated it it was cold we should have a picture of that out too he looked like he looked so gross after he swam like a little rat like it was so funny but um and he climbs mountains like we live in colorado there's like a bunch of mountains here he's we've taken him to new mexico and he fell into a cactus like he's like just out here living life you know he he cannot climb stairs They advised us of that whenever I first got him because I was living in a townhouse at the time and they were like, oh, geez, well, you better like cage those off because he's going to fall, like roll down all seven flights of stairs. But um, he's getting better. Like he'll try. He can put his front paws on like the stair. He can climb up a little stoop if it's just one stoop. But stairs are like, he's terrified of them. But I think he'll get there because he's gotten so much stronger and he's gotten super fat since we got him. And, um, I don't know, he's just a lot more healthy. So, you should definitely adopt and um, from a local shelter. So, we are in Colorado, and we live in, like, the Pikes Peak region. So, there's HSPPR, Humane Society, Pikes Peak region. Um, we, there's also, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, so there's, like, the Beaver County Humane Society, which, um, I actually got a cat from there before and had visited multiple times. And the one we got Prismo from is the Columbus Humane Society in Ohio. So that's just three. Those are three shelters. There's like tons of shelters and even more dogs and cats and bunnies and all kinds of stuff that could use your love. And I think that's really what has helped Prismo the most. You know, like, sure, you know, he has like, food and like comfy bed he's so spoiled but I think like the love that we have shown him has like really been instrumental in his like rehabilitation so all right guys so basically adopt don't shop that's all adopt don't shop and don't forget to stay weird